hi everyone and welcome back so in this video let's talk about the agenda of the whole playlist so these are the topics we are going to cover we will cover base syntax conditional loops looking more into the reactivity of swell.js then we will build a food menu app i mean we are going to build multiple applications and then we will deep dive into the components we will work on the forms we will see how we can manage the state using store how to deal with http requests and we will look into the special elements like slots and then we will talk about server side rendering and finally how you can deploy the applications and additionally uh, we can also talk about auth zero integration of uh, your svelte js app uh, using svelte kit or using just a simple client side svelte js app and then we will see how we can integrate with the different api systems like rest or graphql okay so what we are going to do uh, before getting even started about the base syntax and core features of the Svelte.js, I want you to take a look into this thing. So we are saying that Svelte.js is not using virtual DOM and again we are saying okay Svelte.js is faster. So for some of the people like one of my colleague was asking that okay Svelte.js is not using virtual DOM, how can you say it is faster, all those arguments are there and when you say when you search things online okay how Swell.js is faster than React even if it is not using virtual DOM. I mean first of all there is no comparison both are being used for different use cases I will say Swell.js has its own pros and cons but if we talk about like Swell.js is not using virtual DOM and still it is doing things in the faster way then we have to relook things what virtual DOM is trying to solve okay and this blog is the best example when somebody says okay swell.js is not using virtual dom and still faster then you can share this example okay why and how the swell.js is faster even without using virtual dom and what is actually the virtual dom because people have misunderstanding about the virtual dom first of all so i will i'm just going to go through this blog uh, for a little time and you can i will also attach this particular link you can also take a look okay because this is really important aspect which we need to discuss okay what is the virtual dom if we talk in terms of the react framework it's like in memory dom which has the object representation of your react component and whenever you do some interaction with the ui you change something it applies those changes in that uh, the massive react object and then it applies those changes to the real dom okay because this is the react component this is the javascript representation of that react component right so what we are saying is in many framework you built app by creating render function same as like in the angular you are rendering the template simple example is the react but the result is same it is nothing but a javascript object that object is the virtual dom every time you update uh, you update the state it actually or the state or props you are changing you create a new object representing that component and this is the job of the framework to reconcile the new changes against the old one and that is how the virtual dom is applying the diff to the real dom to apply the changes okay i clicked on one button i need to re-render the list i need to i have added a new element in the list i will create a new object representation in the virtual dom and will apply those changes to the real dom which is available on the browser so this uh, this story of saying virtual dom is fast is started in back in 2013 in some conference and from there it became meme because uh, it is saying that virtual dom is fast but the real dom is slow that is obviously a counter argument it's not like that okay so is the the virtual dom slow okay not exactly it is obviously the faster because what it is doing is it is uh, creating the new object representation of your component and then it is just applying those changes to the real DOM using optimized diff algorithm but for that obviously you have to write your component in the best way uh, I mean there are there are many best practices we use to avoid re-rendering or reconciliation of a component by just using uh, these optimized method like you can just choose uh, that you should component update and can check if there is a props and state is getting updated then only you should re-render unnecessary re-rendering you can avoid by using this should component update 
So when we are saying, okay, virtual DOM is fast, we agree because React is using it and it is really fast because it is using its diff algorithm and applying the changes back onto the real DOM. Uh, that is the overall reconciliation process, right? So it is updating your entire app virtual DOM in one go is a lot of work. So like there is a huge React component tree and the parent component is updated, then obviously the that reconciliation process is running till the child component, right? So where the overhead is coming from when we are saying that virtual DOM is fast, this is about uh, diff because diff is not free. Diffing algorithm we are writing that is not free. We can't apply the changes to the real DOM without comparing. First we have to compare and find out the diff on different nodes and then we have to apply those changes. So there are both snapshot. One snapshot is in the virtual DOM. Another is the real DOM snapshot you see on the browser. You compare the DOM using diff algorithm and apply the changes even you when you are changing an attribute to the button like the label the inner html content that also gets compared and the changes gets applied so it's not only the diffing which is costing us we are saying okay diff algorithm is faster but obviously it is comparing and it requires uh, some memory consumption obviously there is an overhead but it's not only the diff algorithm it's also about how we write the framework okay because everybody has their own way of writing the the code here you can see a uh, lot of times what we do is we iterate onto the array and we keep adding the elements onto the array and react has to reconcile the whole component again and has to create all the children's again and you might have heard about using the unique key for all the child elements why that is needed because while doing the reconciliation react can identify each and every child component uniquely and do not reprocess do not rebuild if the key is same if there is no change in that particular row inside an object array so this is also one of the reason why we should use like the best practices i mean this is like the framework and it is asking you to do all these things to make it work properly right so why there is a need of a virtual DOM then? I mean, we are just writing components. We are not worried about how the reconciliation actually working. We just write our component, user clicks on one button, we change the state and what you want, what an end user, what a developer wants, when I click onto the button, I should be able to see the updated changes happening on the UI, right? Because uh, the, the main focus for the developer should be a state driven UI development. Virtual DOM is valuable because it allows you to build the apps without thinking about the state transition. If you see the, the state transition happening, if you try to track the state transition in a simple component, when you click, lot, when you do a lot of different actions, then you will understand how many times you are actually doing the reconciliation process and that is not coming free. Your diff algorithm are not free, which is actually updating your actual DOM. Okay, so now the conclusion is obviously virtual DOM is faster, can be a faster, but de depends on what you are writing. And obviously the diff diffing we are doing from the virtual snapshot and the real snapshot that is not coming free of cost. But what if these things are not there? Then can you say we can build something faster than even the React? Yes, there is a possibility and that we are doing with the, the Svelte.js without virtual DOM it is reactive in different angle from different angle that's why i started learning uh swelled js it is saying okay they are not using virtual dom then how actually the the swelled js is reactive how it is reacting to the changes happening in the component state and props and how those changes is getting visible to the end user on the ui because that is the mystery that is why we have we have we are seeing those little different framework from jQuery to Angular to React to Vue to Svelte because all the framework are trying to solve the common problem, the reactivity. When there is a change, how the framework is responding to the change so that they can see, user can see the updated change happening on the UI. We did, did it with the jQuery dealing with the actual DOM by iterating the whole tree and DOM. But obviously the DOM is like the big tree, you cannot update a simple DOM node without directly targeting that element. You have to traverse, obviously that was cost not cost effective. We introduced all these framework 
but obviously with these frameworks you end up having a lot of other things also like angular is creating the bulk bulkier builds now they are optimizing that is true but when it comes to svelte what you are getting in the build is just a output compiled code the svelte is just a compiler compiling the the svelte js syntax into vanilla javascript and your browser is happy to read it and if you don't have any external library you don't have you have the nicer reactivity logic written in uh, svelte js and you don't have virtual dom and all the other additional library then obviously this is something which is awesome and everybody wants to learn it so let's get started